The first step in most versions of the evidence-based practice process is to ask a clinical question. You may have heard terms like well-built clinical question, searchable question, or answerable question. What does that all mean? The goal is to have you think about what you want to find before you rush off to search in the databases. Why, oh why, is there an entire step in the EBP process dedicated to asking a question? To many new to the evidence-based practice process, this seems like a pretty stupid thing to spend more than five minutes on. There's something I want to know, so I just type it into Google and I'm good to go, right? Well, sometimes. But a truly awesome clinical question takes a little work up front. Spending the extra time here will allow you to focus on your question. And a focused question will save you a ton of time, get you articles that are actually helpful, and make you the most popular nurse ever. First, you need to assess how much you know on the subject or topic. If you don't know much about a condition, prognosis, medical test, or whatever, you'll want to read up on it before you get into the more detailed searching. You'll be asking background questions such as, how is gestational diabetes best managed? You can find these sorts of answers in textbooks, in overview sources like Dynamed or UpToDate, or even on Google. Once you have a better feel for the topic, you can get more specific by asking foreground questions. These types of questions have more details and are generally specific to your patient or a population you're working with. An example might be, in overweight pregnant women, can lifestyle and diet modifications versus medication reduce the risk of developing gestational diabetes? These types of questions are best answered by journal articles. Generally, you're moving from the background to the foreground questions. If I was teaching this class face-to-face, -face, I'd ask you to hold up your hands if you had ever heard of or used PICO, and I expect that every one of you would raise your hand. But this is one of those concepts that really bears repeating. Just like great pico de gallo is made up of different ingredients, your clinical question is made up of different components. Sure, you can make okay salsa by just throwing something together, but it can be amazing if you just put a little more time into it. The same goes for a good question, and that's where PICO can help. The acronym, not the food. Though you might as well have chips and salsa too. The P used to stand for just patient, but now it's expanding to include more than just a patient, but also a population or a problem. The I primarily stands for intervention, but it can be anything you're interested in looking at. C can be what you're comparing the intervention to. Outcome is what you expect to see or what you're interested in seeing happen. Time isn't always used, but it is helpful in questions that have a time component. The words in parentheses are just another way to help you understand how PICO can help you build your clinical question. So let's apply PICO to a ridiculous example. Let's say I'm interested in stress reduction for nursing students during finals. Here's how I could word my PICO question. Among nursing students, does regular yoga versus binging on M&Ms reduce stress levels during finals? That last example was just an excuse to share my love of M&Ms and sloths. This one is a real one. I was a hospital librarian for a big hospital system in Dallas. They delivered thousands and thousands of babies every year. The hospital administrators were looking for ways to reduce costs and length of stay for new moms and their babies, and also to have an additional marketing tool to woo those still choosing where to go for labor and delivery. Some moms were already bringing in doulas, and anecdotally, it seemed to have a positive effect on the birth experience. The hospital was considering having doulas on call or even on staff to care for those without supportive partners and or for first-time moms or teen moms. They wanted to know if it was actually worth it. So let's peek of this up. So the population I'm interested in is women in labor. The intervention I'm looking at is birth support. The comparison or the control would be the normal care. The outcome could be reduced complications. We could also look at um, better birth experience, reduced C-sections, things like that. And time, of course, in this case, it's the birth process. And this helps us develop our clinical question. Among laboring women, 
does birth support versus normal care affect complication rates during the birth process? The key here is not a perfect PICO. It's just a tool to help you think about what you really want to research. There's actually quite a bit of literature about the benefit of birth support. The last I'd heard about this was that the nursing staff was still pushing for doulas, but the administrators were not yet on board. No surprise there. At this point in the process, it's important to determine what kind of question you're asking, mainly because different types of questions are best answered by different kinds of research. Some students get really fixated on making sure their question fits perfectly into just one of these types, but sometimes your question might be able to fit in one or more categories. In the doula example, it could be a therapy, because we're comparing labor support with normal care, or it could fit more into the prognosis category as we're looking to see the likelihood of C-sections. We might even put it in the qualitative category if all we were focused on was the experience of labor with doula support. Just take a minute or two to figure out where your question best fits. Once you know what type of question you have, it's time to move on to this lovely table. It might be a bit alarming if you're unfamiliar with the study types. We will be coming back to this in detail in the presentation on searching for evidence-based information. The point of this chart is to help you line up your question based on the study type with the research that can best answer your question. There are about a thousand different PICO worksheets and templates out there. People aren't just creating these for fun. Well, maybe they are. Librarians have a very warped sense of what is fun. But in all reality, these worksheets are created to help you. Let them help you. These are some really great sources that hold your hand and walk you gently through the process of writing your question in the PICO format. You can find a list of these on the Evidence-Based Nursing Guide under the PICO section. Searching the healthcare literature is truly like finding a needle in a haystack. But if you take time to formulate a good question before searching, it's like giving yourself a powerful magnet versus just feeling around and hoping for the best. You'll save time and frustration and have a much better chance of finding what you need.